Hello and welcome to Sports Tech Extras. I am Ayan Acharya and joining me from Bangalore, uh, as usual, is my colleague Ashwin Achal. Hi Ashwin. Hi Ayan, how's it going? Good, good. How are things over there? Uh, heavy rain outside. Uh, could be the same tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Manchester, the venue for the third and the final test of what has been a pretty explosive series uh, for reasons both on and off the field. Uh, but yeah, big news coming in from the English camp on uh, Natch Eve. Joe Fracha and uh, Jimmy Anderson had been included uh, in the 14-man squad. So, uh, your, your comments uh, on uh, Archer's uh, return to the fold? Yeah, I mean, England uh, coming in uh, with the full-strength team. Uh, so, they have uh, options, uh, several options uh, mm. to choose from. Uh, they've got Anderson back. They've got uh, Archer back. Um, of course, uh, Archer is a bit of a special case uh, on this occasion because uh, he did write in his column that uh, he may not be in the best uh, mindset uh, to uh, play this match because of all the abuse that he took uh, on social media after he got banned uh, for the second match. I think uh, I think this uh, it's sort of um, this could be seen as a trend uh, that we see in a lot of international uh, sports persons because uh, they are extremely sensitive. I can say definitely more uh, sensitive than sports persons of the past because. Uh, now we have the added element of uh, social media and uh, and the sort of uh, attention uh, that it brings. Not to mention the regular media as well, increased uh, uh, media profiling with electronic media, print media, and uh, websites as well. Uh, yeah. It is interesting because um, Archer says that uh, uh, he was uh, under a lot of scrutiny, cameras all over the place, and. Uh, Whatever uh, he does is news, and he was complaining that he gets too much attention. Uh, it reeked a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, like a woe is me sort of attitude. Uh, what I think he must realize is uh, he's not uh, just a county or a club cricketer anymore. He's an international sportsman, and this is part of the job. I mean, this is something that you have to accept. Uh, the moment you come into international sports, the scrutiny is going to be uh, that much higher. So, uh, it is strange to see him complain about all the attention that he's giving, I mean, that he's getting. It seemed like he was making excuses uh, for a rather elementary mistake that he made. Nobody forced him to break the uh, COVID protocol and visit his home. And, uh, you know, nobody sort of, uh, you know, uh, guided him into making that sort of an error. It was all of his own doing. So, when that happens, you have to take the responsibility for it. So I think his column was a bit uh, untimely. Michael Vaughan had a nice uh, uh, response for, to it uh, in the Telegraph. It was a bold uh, sort of column, but he sort of hit the, hit the nail on the head. I mean, just toughen up, uh, take yeah. the L, you made a mistake, just move on. Yeah, like in terms of you know the sheer the, the sheer value that Archer brings to the table with his uh, fast bowling. Uh, and more so uh, now, considering uh, there's news that uh, you know Ben Stokes uh, could, uh, is is carrying a niggle and may not bowl. So, uh, in terms of just you know the, the, the cricketing element, how how uh, big a leg up is this for the English uh, uh, team? Archer's return, huge, huge impact. I mean, whatever uh, be his uh, personalities, uh, traits, or whatever yeah. else, when he has the ball in his hand, huge impact. I mean, we saw yeah. that in the first test. Even though England lost, he was the man with the ball. I mean, uh, he had the uh, batsman hopping all over the place, bounce, pace, uh, everything that you want uh, from a strike bowler. So, uh, especially now with the, even Anderson is back, uh, available for yeah. selection. Anderson yeah. plus Archer plus Broad and maybe uh, either uh, Wokes or Sam Curran. I mean, this is probably uh, one of the best fast bowling lineups in the world right now. Correct, absolutely. And uh, uh, Joe Root uh, you know, just asked earlier, uh, had said that Archer is looking in, in, in you know, in, in a good space uh, as far as uh, you know uh, the, his bowling is concerned. Uh, he was wearing a quote-unquote big smile during the net. So indications are that he will be in the playing eleven in all likelihood. But do you reckon the veteran uh, pace duo of Broad and Anderson could be uh, back in action in Manchester? 
I think they, uh, I think they will because uh, you can't take Broad out of the team uh, or the playing yeah. eleven now uh, based on. Kind of fix himself at the moment. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So he he yes. is uh, the man in form. Um, uh, Walks uh, possibly could make way. Sam Curran, uh, both were quite impressive uh, in the second test. But when you have a bowler of uh, James Anderson's class in these conditions, yeah. somebody has Curran. to make way for him. Somebody, yeah. one yeah. of either uh, Walks or Curran. I'd probably go with Curran because Walks uh, did uh, get a few wickets in the second test. Absolutely. But what's also interesting in this 14-man squad is uh, all the six bowlers that uh, England have named have uh, played the first two test matches. And England, well, because of reasons uh, of the field as well, were forced to uh, uh, sort of play two very different pace attacks. Save, of course, Ben Stokes, who was part of, uh, you know, both the test matches. But now with uh, a doubt, uh, you know, surrounding his bowling capabilities in the final test, do you reckon uh, England might want to uh, bowl an extra seamer drop down best given the you know rain forecast in manchester yeah uh, that is uh, that is an option stokes if he's not able to bowl i think additional responsibility will be on the uh, other faces i think uh, if they go yeah. with three or four faces uh, it uh, the they will have to bowl a few more overs though i don't see them uh, you know it's not like they are playing in india where uh, you know, the pacers or the bowlers might have to stay on the field for 120, mm. 130, 150 yeah. bent overs. I think, uh, I mean, additional load, but not too much that it would be too much of a big burden for them. Yeah, and credit to the England setup as well. I mean, they've got another test series lined up right after this against Pakistan. And uh, it's, it's, it's commendable the way they have uh, rotated their fast bowlers. I'm sure because, you know, uh, bro, uh, sorry, James Anderson was asked the other day, if he was dropped or rested for the second test, and uh, Anderson well did say that he was uh, rested, so it, it's all part. Seems like it's all part of the workload management plan that ECB has worked up, considering you know these guys are coming back after a long break and playing two back-to-back high-profile test series. Yeah, you're right. Um, Anderson was rested in the second test. Broad was uh, rested in the <laughs> first test. Yeah, Broad was rested. Uh, yeah. The management uh, could justify Broad it. Might disagree. Sorry? Broad might disagree, he was rested. Yeah, I'm he not disagreed. sure if the players agree with this. Uh, you know, because uh, when you are uh, an international cricketer or a fast bowler, batsman, whatever be the case, mm-hmm. you want to be out there on the field whenever possible, yeah. as long as you're fully fit. I mean, Sorry. unless you are overburdened and you ask for a break because it's been an insanely long season, I don't think any of uh, them uh, really want to be rested. I think uh, this is something yeah. that the team management uh, makes a call. Because, uh, you know, if, if you're Broad or Anderson and you're fit uh, and you have uh, home conditions and, uh, well, they have not even played for that long. I mean, nobody has played. It's been a long time since yeah. any sort of uh, sports has happened, or any sort of cricket has happened. You would like to play. I, I'd say yeah. that uh, I don't particularly agree with this uh, load management. I mean, what load are we managing here? Because it's not like they're coming off uh, the end of a uh, insanely long and grueling season. Correct. Correct. So, yeah, that was about England. Uh, West Indies have their own set of, uh, you know, uh, problems to sift through. Right? The pace attack looked really good in Southampton when things were going their way. And extremely flat, despite bowling first in friendly conditions in Manchester. So, uh, do you see some um, chopping and uh, changing in uh, that uh, particular department for West Indies? Shannon Gabriel is the only one that uh, we have questions about because uh, he was not at full fitness in the second test. Of course, Mm. uh, today uh, they had a press conference and it was clarified that uh, Shannon Gabriel is fully fit and he will take the field. But from what we saw in the second test, he was moving a little gingerly. Uh, he was yeah. not uh, making any effort to uh, do any fielding at all. He was just sort of standing there. Uh, so that is the only question uh, fitness-wise. Uh, but uh, uh, given that uh, Chase took five wickets uh, uh, in the first innings, uh, it is possible that they could go in with a specialist uh, spinner uh, with the big man Conwell coming in. Uh, but yeah. apart from that, uh, I think the rest of them sort of pick themselves. Correct. And again, uh, that man, Jason Holder, will have a huge role to play. Uh, you know, not just with the bat, with the ball, but even his captaincy. Because West Indies can't, uh, yeah, they, they, they still have a chance. Because if it's a drawn series, 
they will retain the Wisden title. So they've, it's, 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 uh, they've got everything to play for. And Holder will be one of the key, uh, you know, men for West Indies. He has to promote himself uh, up the order. Right? And yeah. I think we've discussed this a few times before. Yeah. At least about uh, Dowditch. Because uh, at least about Dowditch, if not uh, yeah. further up. Because uh, Dowditch, uh, you know, we could keep a batsman all right. But uh, not technically sound. At least not as technically sound as Holder. We saw in the second test, Dowditch had a problem with... Uh, uh, moving too far uh, back and across, leaving his leg stump exposed and also uh, becoming an LBW candidate. Uh, Holder needs to move up the batting order. I, I'm i not sure why he doesn't give himself enough uh, credit as a batsman. Uh, I think it's yeah. time to... I think it's time he realizes that he's yeah. uh, much better yeah, than... Awesome. We, we, we've been... Uh, of course, he was just recently... Uh, he recently was overtaken by Ben Stokes, uh, became the number one all-rounder. But if you've been the number one all-rounder for a year, and Holder himself has in the past said that he would consider backing up the order, and, and he's got all the shots in the book, he's got a solid defense. I mean, all the more reason for him to come, as you said, at least over Dowridge, because number eight and uh, Holder, I mean, it's, it, it just doesn't uh, mix well at the moment. Given, given more so given, given what's at stake in Manchester, because if, if West Indies can somehow win this Test match. It'll be huge for you know test cricket in in a country that has otherwise sort of shown the tendency to gravitate towards the shorter format. Yeah, true. Maybe Holder fancies himself as a bit of a crisis man when it comes to batting. That is the only reason why uh, he would yeah. come uh, that way down. Maybe he feels that he can bat uh, very well with the tail. So mm-hmm. maybe that is why he sort of demoted himself. But uh, other than that, uh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. Correct. So, yeah, let's see. Let's see how things pan out when uh, day one gets underway in Manchester. And this has been a pretty roller coaster uh, ride of uh, sorts, uh, even uh, with the, the social narrative that has been woven around this series, the Black Lives Matter. Both teams will once again take the knee before the start of play on day uh, one. Uh, that's, that's a pretty commendable move, considering, you know, sports around the world, padding sports have taken a stand. Good to see cricketers too doing their bit. Absolutely. I mean, this is something that we keep wondering about uh, Indian sportspersons all the time. Uh, Why not take a stand on uh, pressing social issues? Okay, Black Lives Matter may not, uh, you know, have much uh, relevance here in India, but uh, we have our uh, share of, uh, huge share of social issues. But you rarely see Indian sportspersons uh, take up the cause uh, vocally. And I think uh, we have to appreciate uh, the cricketers... uh, both uh, from England and West Indies for uh, yeah, taking absolutely. up the Black Lives Matter uh, cause seriously. And they're probably taking a leaf out of uh, Marcus Rashford's book. I mean, look at the sort of yeah. uh, impact he has okay. had uh, yeah. uh, made the uh, UK government change its stance and uh, impacted so many millions of uh, kids uh, in his country. So, yeah, I mean, uh, if you have a platform uh, and you have uh, millions and millions of followers and fans, uh, why not use it for a good cause? Before we wrap up, if you were to call it on the spot, who's going to win the series? England for me, uh, Ion. I mean, uh, full strength. Anderson's yeah. back. Archer's back. Uh, people are, I mean, the players are feeling good after the second test win. Uh, I think it's going to be England all the way. Okay, just, just so we have equal representation, I'm going to side with the West yeah. Indies. Let's see how, how things pan out in Manchester and then we will return, of course, after the star, end of the day. Star performer for the West Indies, who do you think it will be? Match winner. Has to be Jason Holder. I mean, uh, I, I'd be, I, I'm, I've been rooting for Kimar Roach for a while, secretly. Uh, he's yeah. a very good bowler. Recently, in the second test, his drought of uh, going, uh, the, the spell of wicketless, uh, the wicketless spell uh, was broken. So, hopefully, he will come good if the conditions are uh, good. But has to be Jason Holder. It has to be something exceptional from the man he's led from the front, uh, both on and off the field. And it's time for him to sort of come good. Because we have seen the kind of impact Ben Stokes has had, you know, uh, in the second test when he needed to uh, sort of uh, elevate himself to another level. So, hopefully, yeah. Holder will come good. So, Holder for me. And hopefully, West Indies will prove me right. So, oh, yeah. Let's hope so. They make for a really interesting match and an interesting series. Yeah, absolutely. Before.